Richard tells him, you're right, God loves right. you, you know, um, nobody's perfect, and right. again, he takes your money, you know, he's going to comfort you and tell you what you want to hear. You know, he's going to flatter you and tell you smooth things. They comfort again, you with nice. For you at that, for his at that. And uh, remember a while ago that he says, look what I did? This verse talks about that, he says, but I never knew you some verse 21 says, not everyone who calls me Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven. But only those who do what my Father in heaven wants them to do. When the judgment day comes, many will say to me, Lord, Lord, in your name we spoke God's message. By your name we drove out many demons and performed many miracles. Then I will say to them, I never knew you. Get away from me, you. Like but they're saying they, they, they did the thing. People don't do anything. God's the one that does the miracle. God's the one that cast out demons. We don't do anything. But he'll use a he'll use a preacher, right? He'll use him. But he's the one that does the work. We don't do it. But but even there it's showing you that that preacher mm -hmm. was trusting in the works he was doing. Right. And we're not supposed to trust in the works we're doing. The Bible says that the work we that we do is what we are supposed to do. And after we've done that work, to consider ourselves an unworthy servant. Because mm -hmm. we only did what we were required to do. We didn't go beyond what, what we were required to do. Expected us. <laughs> you only did what was expected of you. Right. Okay, well, let's go out of uh, Jeremiah 23, verse 21 and 22. Jeremiah 23, verse 1 and 2. No, 23, verse 21 and 22. Jeremiah 23, verse 21 and 22. Anyone understand my own English? Somebody read it, please. It says, I did not send these prophets, yet they ran. I have not spoken to them, yet they prophesied. But if they had stood in my counsel, then they would have let my people hear my words, and they would have turned them from their evil way and from their evil deeds. That's what we're saying. If you tell people the truth, the truth will set them free. But when you tell them lies, and a lot of these false preachers said that God called them, but He sure didn't call them, right? Well, you'll know when they uh, when they preach the truth, God word, they call them God. Yeah. If they don't meet the qualifications in the Word of God, they're not called of God. It don't matter how much they say they're called. They must meet the qualifications. There's a lot of preachers out there that have gotten a divorce and they're behind the pulpit. You cannot be married to two women and be behind the pulpit. You cannot be living like the devil and be behind the pulpit. You cannot be hooked on sin and be preaching behind the pulpit. I mean, the, the natural realm, I always think of the Border Patrolman, that you make a mistake, they kick you out. Well, the things of God are much higher than the Border Patrolman and the rules. God's rules are higher. But we ignore them. Even churches, you know, will hire a preacher that doesn't meet the qualifications. Churches hire music directors that aren't even singing. Aren't even singing. That's right, they bring in Christian groups that they're not saved either. They're, they're not like the world with earrings and long hair. And yeah, I remember that when we used to be at Assembly of God, we used to take our the teenagers. I think it was youth night. Every Friday we'd take them to corpus and I saw one of the singers, he had long, long hair and earrings and it was one like that. Man, I, 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 didn't, I didn't feel like taking my daughter to that. I, mean, you know, it just, I didn't feel right. 
Uh, they would take them out to other churches, every Friday. Big churches in Portland. They had a lot of youth. A youth rally, I think. I think it was a youth rally. But I said, don't, don't be a season if you get sick. Let's go to First Timothy 4, 1 and 2. First Timothy chapter 4. Brother, real fast. On 21, I, okay. I, uh, I feel like it's on the tip of my tongue and I just don't get it. What, what does it mean that... Uh, I, it says, uh, I did not send the prophets, yet they ran. What does that mean? What, what does they it mean that they ran? Huh? They kept, they went on preaching. Oh. Yeah, they ran to the message. But God the message was not of God. Yeah, God didn't give them the message. Because again, the, the bottom line is this, the standard is, if the man of God is preaching the word of God, then he's the man of God. If he strays away from the, from the Bible and teaches books, then he's not of God. That's how simple it is. Black and white. Let's go to 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 1 and 2. First Timothy, what verse? Chapter 4, verse 1 and 2. Somebody read it, please. Uh, the Spirit, the spirit uh, speaks expressly that in the later times some shall depart from the faith, given heed to the seducting, seducting spirits and doctrines of devils, speaking lies and hypocrisy, having their conscience seared with a hot iron. Isn't that true nowadays how we're going through right now? There's so many preachers, you know, rising up right now. I mean, they're Many. And many, you know, even Christians, they, you know, they, they get turned off and get, a lot of people, they don't want to go to church anymore. We're in a state of apostasy, you know. They don't, a lot of them, they don't want to go to church. Uh, there's no good church. Where do we go? So, they, you know, some of them are true Christians, but they're turned out and some of them go to church, to other churches, or they have Bible studies. Some of them, they don't even have Bible studies, they don't go to any church at all. Let's go to Second Peter chapter 2, verse, verse 1, 2, and 3. Second Peter chapter 2, verse 1, 2, and 3. Right on this one real fast, on verse 2, where it says that their conscience, like it's been branded, it's, it's dead. Yeah. You know, uh, I know that, uh, I, I know clothing goes with the style, right? With, with yeah. the way the world yeah. is going. So I know that sometimes it's hard to find things to, the brand. to cover yourself yeah. in the right way. Mm -hmm. But yet, you know, in the churches we see, you, you know, in the world when you went to a nightclub, girls dressed a certain way. When you go to church, you shouldn't be seeing that. But yet you do. You know what I mean? And and I understand, like I said, I understand sometimes it's hard to find clothes that are not revealing. But they are out there. You just got to look, right? Yeah. And even if it's a t-shirt, I mean, it covers everything. Praise God, right? Because you're not there to draw people to you. You're there to worship God, you know? And, and, and unfortunately, the false preachers are not preaching this from the pulpit, you know what I mean? They're, they're, uh, they allow these things to go on, you know, and, and it's a distraction and it also creates lust, which shouldn't be in the church, you know? So, they, I, I think of that when I think of the, their consciences. They have no, uh, they don't think it's wrong. They don't see anything wrong with it, in other words. They're already used to they the way the things, yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. it's just, it's just the way of life now, you know, that, that's the way they look at it and that's the way they look at sin. Verse 3, too. Yeah. Oh, that's right. yeah. Basically, a callus forms around the heart, yeah. like a scab. Yeah. It's hard. No longer can the word of God penetrate and change your way of thinking. Well, that can happen too when you find the spirit of God. Right? Yeah. Well, basically, the person's already doing things like that. They've already crushed the spirit of God. They're already falling away from the Lord. Mm -hmm. Those are warning signs. Mm -hmm. Three and four, I can say. Okay, you go back to three and four. Where are we? What, what is it? Uh, that Timothy, to you? First, first Timothy, first Timothy, four, three and four. First Timothy, three. Okay, we're forbidding to marry. I know that. 
and the commanding to abstain. Okay, the, <laughs> this is from the board. Is it delivery of the work? Uh, like, are they talking about vegetarian? <laughs> There were some food that they couldn't eat. Um, I, I haven't found it. Where, where, where is first? First Timothy chapter four, verse four, three and four, three. Four, three and four. First Timothy four, three, three and four, right? Yeah. Three and four, three and four. Okay. Commanding to abstain from foods which God created. This is this is talking about the Judaizers. Okay. Remember last time we're talking about. Uh, the, the Pharisees, the rabbis, they were following man-made commandments. What they were telling the people is, you cannot get married. Well, we're in the Bible, this is you can't get married. Yeah. I want you to get married. You know, going back, the Bible says, it's better to marry, to get married than to burn or dust. Yeah. So it says, and, and they would tell the people to abstain from eating meats. And when Jesus spoke to the Pharisees, he told them, it's not what comes in through the mouth that defiles you. It's what comes out of your mouth. It's what's in your heart. The way you speak, the way you talk. So... Okay, so like on, on the Daniel fast, because I, I went through that. No, well that's something else. That's fasting. Okay, so it doesn't... It doesn't they, were, they just didn't eat the meat because they were sacrificed to idols. Right. And because they were in Babylon. Well, for example, like the Catholic Church that says don't eat meat on Friday. That's not any commandment. It doesn't mean a thing. But it's not talking about like health-wise, like if you're more vegetarian because you no. don't want to that. Basically, being a vegetarian is good. Yeah. Well, <laughs> we're all covered for us. And we're yeah. yeah. for that first sacrifice. <laughs> yeah. on, on this, though, on the foods, uh, of course, God's not going to contradict himself, right? So the foods would match the dietary law as mm -hmm. far as yeah. clean yeah. animals versus yeah. unclean. Yeah. However, in this, if we were to put it in today's vernacular, it would be like, well, you can't eat. Even if it's a good food, like God says, uh, like, I'm drawing a blank, I can't think of any good food right now. Uh, hamburgers. No, oh, cow. Okay, cow is a clean animal that we can eat, according to the scripture, right? Right. In, in our modern time, they would be saying, well, you can't eat that cow because I haven't made it kosher. I haven't said a blessing over it or I haven't, you know, looked at how they prepared it. Oh, so, okay. you know, that in our time, that's what it would be. That, that meat is clean according to yeah. mm, the not, Bible. It's not don't eat red meat because it's harder to digest. No. Like that. Like yeah. Yeah. Now, on the other meat. hand, if it was a pig, well, pigs are unclean according to the scripture right. and you wouldn't eat it. But that's not what the scripture's saying. It's saying the the foods that God gave for us to receive. Yeah. And, yeah. and yeah. the reason I bring up kosher is because that's what happens in Israel today. Yeah. You know, that the foods are not kosher, you can't eat them. And all kosher means is the priest, they, they say a blessing right over it. That's so basically. Do you understand what that means, sister? Kosher? Yes. The they had to go through a certain ritual, the way they cut the meat, the way they did the things. And if, if, if the butcher was there and a rabbi was not there, then it was not kosher. Uh, a rabbi had to be there to make sure that the way they killed the animal was following the ritual that they had to sign how to kill the animal. But it's man-made. But it's man-made, it's not a God. How did they get kosher Well, again, it goes back to, to, to uh, Orthodox Judaism, mm -hmm. where a priest has to be there, he has to tell you how to raise, how to plant the seed, how to raise the seed, the rituals you do over the seed, so forth. Mm -hmm. And if that has been done all the way through, from the seed, you know, to the, to the product produce, then it's kosher. So is your bacon? Would it be surprised in the future? <laughs> <laughs> and the seed's made by God. Yeah, but it's not more ritualistic than anything else. Yeah. Okay. The ritual. Then they didn't go through the ritual, and if a rabbi wasn't present, then it's not kosher. You're not supposed to eat it. But God, if God said it's good, then right. it's and, and then again, if we're talking about food, for example, nowadays we can eat shrimp, we can eat crab, and all, but technically speaking, it's better if we don't. Not because it's not beneficial to our body. A lot of the laws in the Old Testament, and he didn't say why, but now we know, like, right, to be healthy. Or, you know, the well, though, all those animals that you listed are bottom feeders, so right. they're eating dead animals. Yeah. Then, you know, they, they scavenge, scavenge. They eat the pieces of other. The cockroaches in the sea. Yeah, the cockroaches. The next word is uh, Second Peter, chapter 2, verse 1, 2, and 3. 
And it says, 